Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be telling you all about the books that I read in August. Now I have already done one wrap up for books I read in the month of August for the books I read from the Booktubeathon and I will leave that wrap up linked down below so you can check that out. I read seven books in the Booktubeathon. It feels like the Booktubeathon was so long ago, like is it me or has August just lasted forever? Anyways, I'm just going to get into the books and talk about them in the order that I read them, starting with Artichoke Hearts by Sita Brack Makari. This is about a 12 year old girl named Mira who is dealing with all the things that a young girl deals with when she is 12 years old. She's dealing with her first crush and her first period and I absolutely loved the inclusion of menstruation in this book. I think it's so valuable to be included especially in um, middle grade and YA books because it's a new and frightening experience. This book includes what Mira expected from her first period but how it was very much quite different to that. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. She's also dealing with her first experience of death and grief. Her grandmother is dying and she's grappling with the emotions of that and trying to understand her own complex emotions related to this. The characters in this book also have quite diverse life experiences. Mira is from an Indian Jewish family and she talks about how even within her family there is um, like diversity in how they look. She has dark skin but her sibling has blonde hair and blue eyes. There is one character who is Nigerian Irish and there is another character who has been adopted from Rwanda after genocide. There is a romance plot to this novel but it's not really the central crux of the novel which I thought was really really great. It was just one part of Mira's life. It wasn't the be all and end all of her life in saying that the romance is super cute. Another book that I've read with a super cute romance plot is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. This has been on my TBR for such a long time but I was finally pushed into reading it because I wanted to watch the Netflix film which I can also very highly recommend. This novel which is part of a trilogy follows the 16 year old Lara Jean Song. So the main thing that gets the plot of this novel started is the love letters that Lara Jean has written to boys that she has had very intense crushes on over the years. She wrote them love letters back when she had these crushes and has kept them in a box and what happens is that these letters are sent out to those boys. She handles this situation incredibly well. I thought that the plot of the novel would be more to do with like chasing down the letters and trying to get them back. That's not what this book is about. There are four boys that she sends letters to. Two of them aren't all that significant, but the more significant one, there's Josh, who is one of Lara Jean's like closest friends, but he is also the recently ex-boyfriend of her older sister. Her older sister has just moved to Scotland to go to university and she has split up with Josh. And when Josh receives the letter that was written quite a while ago, his feelings towards Lara Jean become quite muddled. The other more significant person is Peter Kavinsky. Peter Kavinsky is like this pretty popular boy um, at Lara Jean's school and her crush developed years and years ago when they had like a very small kiss in a game of spin the bottle. Basically Peter and Lara Jean decide to have a fake relationship, basically to get the attention of other people that they are interested in. But again, feelings become pretty muddled. This is such a cute book. I love it so much and I definitely want to read the rest of the series. The characters are constructed so well. Lara Jean and both of her sisters are half Korean. Unfortunately their mother who was Korean has passed away but it was really great to see their father, their single father, trying to keep their connection with their Korean heritage alive. I really enjoyed the film as well. I thought it was a really fantastic adaptation. I'm not one of these people that thinks like a book to movie adaptation has to be like exactly the same as the book. Like the art of adaptation is a thing and I think all of the changes they made in the film made total sense. Yeah, I think you should definitely read this one and if not just watch the film because the film is great. <laughs> 
There have been a lot of lovely books that I've read this month and the next one of those is The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. I had heard nothing but good things about this book. I was so excited to get to it and I am in love with the front cover. This is such a charming, quirky little read. This is a book about the possessions that a man named Anthony has collected over several years. He has collected objects which have been lost in the hopes that he will one day be able to reunite these objects with their original owners. Anthony is a writer and he writes stories prompted by these objects and initially I wasn't sure about that structure in the novel but I grew to really like it and I found these snippets of his imaginings of the owners of these objects and how these objects um, were significant. I found those little snippets so charming. Some of those little snippets of stories are more serious than others. Anthony passes away and he leaves the house to his assistant, Laura, um, and the one condition of her having this house is that she has to try and reunite the objects with their original owners. I don't think this book was perfect. It's a very, very lovely story, but there are moments in it that feel too convenient to be realistic. And also I, I found the idea of wanting to reunite lost objects with their owners as like a sort of repentance to the universe. I didn't quite buy that, but in saying that, I still think it was a really charming read. And if you are interested in um, quite uplifting novels, um, if you've enjoyed books uh, like Rachel Joyce's novels, then I think you would really enjoy this one as well. The next book I finished in August was Goodbye Vitamin by Rachel Kong, although it's set in America, so I guess it's Goodbye Vitamin. Um, this is about a young woman who goes back home to live with her parents and help her mother out because her father has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. This book is told in diary entries, which is something that I really enjoy in novels. I think it works really well for me. Um, another thing that stood out about this book was the sense of humour it has, because I think when there is someone in your life, someone that you're close to, um, that is unwell, you need to have a sense of humour about it, otherwise you won't be able to get through it. And I think if you are trying to understand more about Alzheimer's. This is a really fantastic book to read. Someone in my own life has recently been diagnosed and and this book enabled me to empathise with that person a lot more. Um, it's one of the reasons that I am currently raising money for the Alzheimer's Society and if you would like to donate money to my fundraising, the link is always down below. I'm less than £100 away from my goal at the moment, so hopefully I can reach it. Anyway, on with the book review. This is quite a short book and I found it so impressive um, the depth that we got to know all of the characters in this book no matter how briefly they are featured in the novel. I think the author just did a fantastic job of constructing her characters. Not only is our protagonist dealing with her father's condition but she also has, you know, stuff going on outside of that she is coming to terms with a breakup for instance. I think this is something that gets thrown around in book reviews a lot but it really is true. When an author is able to articulate something that you haven't been able to put into words it's just an incredible reading experience and I definitely had that with this book and I would highly recommend it. The next book I finished was A Faceless by Alyssa Scheinmel. This is a YA novel that um, follows a young girl dealing with her life after she's in a very tragic accident. Um, she is in an, accident, in an accident which involves her getting quite severe burns all over her body. Well, I think it's predominantly one of her arms and then there's a lot of damage done to her face um, and she is offered the opportunity to have a face transplant so effectively she has the face which once belonged to a person who is now not alive which I can only imagine what that would do to someone's mental health. This book follows our main character coming to terms with that, understanding her relationship with herself, her understanding of herself, puts quite a lot of strain on her relationship with her parents. 
There is also a plot line which involves her boyfriend, her wondering whether her boyfriend has stayed with her out of pity. I cannot speak to the medical accuracy of this book and I cannot speak to um, how it treats people with disfigurements. It's not something I have direct experience with, although um, my mother is a burn victim and this book brought up a lot of thoughts about that. It also brought up a lot of thoughts um, to do with my own relationship with my physical appearance. It did make me have a slight existential crisis, like thinking about the value that not only society puts on particularly young women's appearances, but also the personal pressures that I put on my own appearance. It made me think about how much of my own personal worth and value I put in my own appearance. This book wasn't the best book that I'd ever read in terms of plot or character or writing but it definitely gave me a lot to think about. The next book I finished was Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I am on a bit of a Taylor Jenkins Reid binge. I have read like one of her books every month since I discovered her writing and I am building up to reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And just like the two books I've read from her previously I absolutely loved Forever Interrupted. Her books are like literary romances. They are incredible. We follow two timelines in this book, the first of which follows the blossoming romance between uh, two twenty-somethings named Elsie and Ben. The chemistry between the two is instant. They are so into each other, they fall in love, and within a matter of weeks they elope. So that's one of the timelines we're following, and the second one is further down the line. It is I think it's just over a week after they elope and get married and we find out that Ben dies. It was a random, tragic, shocking event. He was going to the shop to get Elsie like this cereal that she had a craving for and he was knocked over and dies. So we're following this amazing romance plot at the same time as watching Elsie grieve for the person she believes is the love of her life. That event of the person that you love just randomly dying, that's an anxiety that I have had with so many different people in my life. Like with romantic relationships, with family relationships, with friendships, it's a place that my anxiety takes me to. And thinking about that actually happening was just a lot for my heart to handle. <laughs> After Ben has died, we follow the tension between uh, Elsie and Ben's mother because Ben's mother didn't even know that Elsie existed. All of this author's books have made me extremely emotional but they've also given me moments where I have genuinely laughed at things that the characters have said and I just I think Taylor Jenkins Reid is a phenomenal writer that I would recommend to anyone. Next on to the books that I read for Thriller-a-thon. I read two of the three books that I planned on reading. Uh, the first of those was The Sick Rose by Erin Kelly. Wasn't really a fan of this one. So this book is about two protagonists. The first of those is 39 year old Louisa. She is like a botanical expert who is working on a restoration project. And then we have 19 year old Paul who is like a criminal um, and he is uh, working on community service because essentially he took a deal which involved him getting a lesser punishment in order for him um, like pointing the finger at his friend Daniel. Both protagonists have very troubled pasts and uh, when they encounter each other a very tentative romance forms between the two. I didn't find the romance particularly believable. This book is also told through flashbacks, so Louise's flashbacks are 20 years previous and we see her in a relationship with um, Adam who is like a wannabe rock star and he dies. That's something that is definitely still haunting her. Paul's flashbacks are, I think it was like seven or eight years previously and it looks at the death of his father and how he began to get involved with this guy Daniel and start getting involved in criminal activity. I thought the flashbacks were really messy. I think particularly with the male characters in this book there wasn't a huge amount of 
differentiated their personalities in my opinion. Um, I think a lot of the characters felt quite flimsy to me and some of the things that happen at the end of this book I don't think they were congruent with the picture of the characters that had been built up for the rest of the novel and that wasn't to do with like character development or anything it just seemed like just uncharacteristic of the characters that had been built up. From what I can gather from other reviews of this book people who even really enjoy Erin Kelly's writing have said this is probably the weakest of her books so I would be interested to give more of her books another go and see what I think of those but yeah this one wasn't really for me. The second book that I read for Thrillerathon I enjoyed a lot more and that was The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. This is my second read from this author. I read Big Little Lies earlier this year and I didn't enjoy The Husband's Secret quite as much but I still would recommend it. The way I describe Leanne Moriarty's books are basically if thrillers and chiclet had a baby. Like this is what would be produced. In this book we follow a character who um, is going through um, some belongings and she finds a letter um, that her husband wrote quite some time ago um, at the birth of their child which says to be opened in the event of my death and there is a very big secret in this letter. For quite a lot of the book the reader doesn't get to find out what is in this letter um, and I, it drove me mad. I was desperate to know what was in this letter. When you do eventually find out what happens in it, you do begin wondering like, what would you do in this woman's circumstances? Like you think you know someone inside out, the person you have decided to spend your entire life with, the person you've had a child with, the person who has been so good to you, how would the contents of this letter change your feelings about them. In this book we're not only following the relationship between those two characters but there are some other um, romantic and familial relationships that we are following at the same time and these um, different stories do all um, weave in together and I think that's something that Leanne Moriarty does really really well. She is able to balance these different plot lines that in themselves could be entire novels. I think she has become one of those authors who I just want to read everything that they've written. In August I also read The Adventure of the Engineer's Thumb and Other Cases by Arthur Conan Doyle. This is a collection of Sherlock Holmes stories. I don't feel like I need to give those like much description. I really enjoy reading these stories. I find it really comforting to just be able to dip in and out of them and that's how I read this book. I read them gradually over maybe like two or three weeks. I find them really comforting because it's a world that I feel very familiar with. There are characters that I feel very familiar with. It's just enjoyable to see Sherlock and Watson solving some crimes and I don't really have much more to say about them other than that. And the final book that I finished in August was Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I think some people aren't gonna be happy with my opinions on this book. Didn't really like it. Uh, there are several reasons why I didn't really like it. In its defence I thought that it was very gripping. Um, even though I wasn't necessarily enjoying it, I found it quite easy to keep reading it. So in this book there are um, like a group of villagers who are ruled by uh, this like wizard um, that lives like up in a tower and every 10 years he comes to the village and selects a 17 year old girl to take back to his home with him. They stay there for 10 years and then the girls never decide to go back to the village afterwards. They always go off somewhere else and do something else. Our main character is convinced that her best friend is going to be chosen because her best friend is beautiful and amazing but of course it's actually our main character that gets picked. Our main character who is incredibly 2D, incredibly flat, all of her like character traits are very like surface level and superficial. In fact I would say that for all of the characters in this book they, they are a list of adjectives rather than believable people. I thought this book was full of tropes. If there was like like insta love in this, the romance wasn't believable. Very much like a YA book masquerading as an adult fantasy. One of the things that I'd heard about this book was that it was very loosely a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. It isn't really a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. There are like little elements here and there, there are fairy tale elements here and there, but they felt very tacked on to me. I just felt this whole book was like tacked together 
and it's probably my own fault for picking this book up i should realize by now that like fantasy books with like a chosen girl who happens to be special i just i'm done with them so yeah wasn't really a fan of this one. So a bit of a mixed reading month in August. I read a lot of stuff that I really loved, some stuff that I didn't love. Let me know down below in the comments if you read any of these and what you thought of them. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with my thoughts on Uprooted. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in my next video.